Hey, what's up, fellas? I had a customer come to me and ask if I could build them something like this that doesn't require a huge air compressor. Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm doing a build for Joe. This is going to be uh, one for the record books here. This is going to be used for parking lots and things like that. Asphalt repair, pavement resurfacing and things like that. But essentially what they needed was a high-powered heat source that doesn't require an air compressor because they have machines similar to what this is going to do that hook up to air compressors so large that they're towed behind a truck. This is a Pulse Jet engine and it has some features to it that are a little bit different than some of the stuff that I've seen that's out there. One of the first being the way we're aspirating this thing. This might be too much aspiration, too much air. I've tweaked it a little bit based on some designs that I've seen, but um, one of the coolest things about the testing we're gonna be doing is some thermal cracking of propane fuel. If you look at this chart right here that I've made, you can see that the combustion velocity of propane is 0.39 meters per second, which isn't all that exciting. It's about the same as methane. But if we thermally crack the propane by heating it to 650 degrees, we'll produce methane and ethylene, and even possibly some hydrogen and carbon. The good thing about these two fuels that will be created is their combustion velocity is significantly higher than that of propane. And in a pulse jet engine, that's going to give more power and a higher frequency. But why am I so excited about burning ethylene in a pulse jet engine? We're going to Ali Ali demonstrate for us here why I want to burn ethylene in my pulse jet engine and uh, why I want to make it. Essentially, what we have going on here is we are going to thermally crack the fuel of this burner. And we're going to do that by, at some point, this is going to have a jacket of this 3H tubing, similar to what you see right there. Um, some deep research that I did and some old PDFs from some scientific research that was done on pulse jets back in the 1930s um, shows that when you increase the fuel flow into a propane pulse jet engine, okay, the frequency decreases, and that makes sense. I'm not going to explain why, but for methane, it's the opposite. Increasing the fuel flow of methane increases the frequency, and the reason why the propane, I believe, decreases the frequency is because it's bogging it down. It's not able to breathe enough air in there to burn that propane. So the frequency goes down and it bogs down. Check this out, guys. 2.5 to 9.6% is the range that propane burns in air. 10% propane in air will not burn, which is shocking. All you potato gun launcher guys out there, you're killing yourself. So this explains a lot. And this is so cool. Check this out. Because we can burn up to 17% in air, this tells me that we get more power out of combusting the methane because we're burning almost twice as much fuel, or you are able to do so, if that makes any sense. Even cooler yet, with ethylene, you can burn with combustion um, ratios or gas composition per volume, this is percent, 28.6% per volume, or by volume, you can burn ethylene gas. So even more power than the lousy 9.6%. So dumping more fuel with our available air does us no good with propane. This is what we are. There we go. We're gonna heat this coil torch. That's gonna to crack the fuel and that should produce these other three gases. Mostly we're going for these two and we have to reach this temperature to do that. Yeah, 
getting some serious soot. Look at that. Okay, something's happening there. Damn fall. Look at that. It's going crazy. I wasn't doing that before. Did it turn into acetylene gas? Wow. The soot production has ceased. I'm, I really don't have good. Okay, so this is what we got, fellas. Now, that which is not measured cannot be improved, so. We have a mica shield in place because I don't want any major thermal cracking taking place and botching this test. I want to see what this thing does on just propane. I'm not so worried about the thermal cracking right now. So step one, we're just going to learn how to use this thing. Learn how to light it, get it going and run it. And step two is um, we're going to put a thrust gauge on there. So the stand's starting to catch on fire. I had to shut it down. It's definitely time for a thrust test. Okay, in this test, we have two pieces of instrumentation. We're going to be using a wind meter at about a meter distance. <laughs> and we have a thrust gauge in place. This is kind of dangerous. I might end up getting hit in the face with a hot pulse jet. Thinking this will work. And we are just going to test it on regular propane first before we begin the thermal cracking process. You know, I got to say, just from looking at what we have here in front of us, I feel like the first modification should be to cut the barrel off to about right here. This color in indicates we're only getting 400 degrees. Up on into the blue, we're about the 600 degree temperature range. So... We're obviously not getting any combustion right there. We're just throwing a lot of air. Decreasing the length of that barrel increases the frequency, which would also increase the power output. But before we do that, I'm going to go get a piece of pipe, and I'm going to hold it at the end of that while it's running and see what type of performance characteristics are exhibited. Okay, so here's the dilemma. 
we added five inches to this tube and it didn't seem to do anything. The bluing stops there, which is probably where the flame stops. There's five inches and there's seven inches. I don't know what to do. We have reduced the barrel by five inches. We're now at 17 and a quarter. 17 and a half, I'm sorry. I believe we were at 22 and a half. fellas so off camera I had a heck of a time getting this thing lit again um, so I put that five inch piece of metal back on there to see if that would help and that didn't help so now what I'm doing is I'm crimping down the propane spuds to 25 thousandths of an inch to increase the propane jet velocity which should cause the air horns to pump more air and make it easier to light so we're gonna do a couple of light tests here and sure enough doing that did make the thing easier to light. I ended up taking off that end nozzle to try it, see if that, maybe it was just that, but no, it is now lighting up very easy. I'm very happy that I solved that problem because it took me 20 minutes to lit. Just to prove it one final time, and voila, we're good to go. Okay. I think that's All right, fellas, so we found ourselves in a situation where this thing just did not want to light. And the reason for that was we weren't getting enough oxygen in the combustion chamber. And that was noted by the fact we had a huge lazy flame issuing out of the front of the Pulse Jet Burner. So, one of the ways to increase the air input to the combustion chamber is to decrease the spud inside diameter. So we took a pair of Nipix pliers and crimped it down to about 25 thousandths of an inch. 55 thousandths of an inch is just way too big and I kind of knew that going into this, but I thought I'd give it a try. It's okay at the upper end operating levels because as a result of crimping this, we lost a half pound of thrust. And what we need to do now is just get higher propane pressures by either hooking up two bottles in tandem or putting our propane bottle in a tank of warm water. There's another solution for that. So, now that we're pumping more air and less propane, the burner is lighting so much easier. But we lost that half pound of thrust. So we'll take a look at that. They say the optimal propane to air ratio is 4% propane, 96% air. Propane will not burn at all if you are under 2.5% or above 9.6% propane. That's a very narrow band of combustion. That's why I want to thermally crack this fuel also to get it to where we can pump 28% fuel in there. I don't know where this ends up thermodynamically cradle to grave. You still may end up with the same amount of apples in your bag of oranges at the end of the day. I don't know. Man, I hate that term. At the end of the day. <laughs> 